Since the turn of the 21st century, it's clear that China has seriously increased investments in new technology to challenge U.S. supremacy. Chief among China's desires is to create its own aircraft carriers that can rival anything the U.S. can field. Because aircraft carriers are the backbone of both diplomacy and military power, China has steadily increased its capabilities over the past 20 years. Since then, China has put into service two aircraft carriers and recently launched its first modern carrier, the Type 003 Fujian, in June 2022. But how does the Fujian compare to the most advanced U.S. carrier, the USS Gerald R. Ford? Could the Fujian really beat the Ford in a head-to-head -head fight? Before getting into the capabilities and the limitations of each carrier, it's essential to understand what they really are. The Fujian is the cutting edge of Chinese innovation. After boasting for years that they will build a modern blue water capable fleet, the Fujian is a great step in the right direction for the Chinese Navy. Instead of relying upon ex-Soviet carriers, which are severely outdated, the Chinese created their first wholly indigenous and independently designed carrier. Though their second aircraft carrier was built in China, its design relied heavily on Soviet carrier technology. With the Fujian, the Chinese shipbuilding industry truly made a new Chinese product. As for the Ford, it too is the pinnacle of American shipbuilding efforts. With the new technologies like the Electromagnetic Aircraft Launch System or EMALS, the advanced arresting gear known as the AAG, dual-band radar, and new nuclear reactors among almost 50 other new technological developments make the Ford the most advanced aircraft carrier the US has ever put to sea. Because of that, both these carriers represent the absolute cutting-edge technology that either country could use in a fight. Now with their background established, let's see a quick size comparison. The Ford comes in at 1,092 feet in length overall compared to the Fujian's 1,050 feet. The Ford also has a greater beam or maximum length sideways at 252 feet compared to the Fujian's 240 feet. As for displacement, the Ford beats out the Fujian by about 20,000 tons, displacing about 100 tons when fully combat loaded. Because the Ford is slightly bigger and displaces more weight, it's able to carry more food, fuel, ordnance, and people than the Fujian. The extra space allows the addition of more equipment and compartments in the future should the U.S. decide to do this. With less available space on the Fujian, there would be less capacity to increase capabilities without serious changes to the ship's structure that would cost much more time and money than being able to add on to existing compartments. While the extra weight might seem like a disadvantage in terms of speed, it's not when you look at the engineering plants of the two vessels. It's this fundamental difference that gives the Ford a very distinct advantage over the Fujian. The Ford, like every other carrier in the U.S. fleet, is powered by nuclear reactors. The A-1B nuclear reactors on board the Ford are awe-inspiring pieces of equipment. Engineered to be the most efficient nuclear reactors the Navy has ever fielded, these reactors produce huge amounts of energy. Though currently classified, the amount of energy these reactors can produce can propel the ship at a minimum of 30 knots and power the electrical load for the entire ship while doing so. On the other hand, the Fujian is equipped with eight boilers and four steam turbines. How this works is that when the boilers come to a high enough temperature, the steam that's created is used to help power the turbines. Once the turbines get moving, their rotation helps move the shafts once it passes through their reduction gear. Chinese media sources have admitted that the boilers used on the Fujian are just a beefed-up version of what's present on the other two carriers. Though the Chinese government requested bids for naval nuclear reactors in 2019, the country is still years away from developing its first nuclear-powered carrier. But despite this, these supercharged boilers can propel the Fujian at an impressive 30 knots, which is as fast as U.S. destroyers and cruisers can go despite being about eight times their displacement. Even though the Chinese have greatly improved their engineering capabilities, conventional plants cannot compare to nuclear reactors. Nuclear reactors are the apex of naval propulsion systems, since nuclear reactors produce much more energy than traditional engineering systems could ever make. Nuclear reactors also have a huge advantage with the unlimited endurance of the ship. Because conventional ships require fuel to power their engineering plants, the extra space and weight needed for all those fuel tanks limit the number of other items you can store on the ship like aircraft and ordnance. Conventional ships are also severely limited due to their need to refuel, while U.S. carriers like the Ford have to pull into a shipyard once every 25 years to change out their nuclear fuel rods, conventional ships operating at sea need to refuel about once every week or two underway, depending on fuel consumption. And underway replenishment is a huge problem for the Chinese Navy. Underway replenishment is when a ship comes alongside an oiler at a distance of 180 to 200 feet, and lines are connected to the ship. The receiving ship, normally a warship, connects cables that allow a fuel rig and cargo lines to be put across. 
This incredibly dangerous evolution was first developed by the US during World War I and is one of the main reasons why the US Navy dominates the world. Though NATO countries and some other blue water navies have mastered this technique, countries like China and Russia have not. Chinese naval vessels only started experimenting with underway replenishment back in 2019. Though this first test was a success, it wasn't remarkable. It involved a Chinese destroyer that stayed alongside an oiler for just 30 minutes before breaking away. US ships regularly stay alongside for hours at a time, and sometimes these resupply missions can last up to 10 hours, depending on the amount of stores received. Because of this, the Chinese would be highly unlikely to replenish the Fujian's fuel at sea. Even though the Fujian could conduct flight operations to replenish her stores, it's unknown if Chinese pilots have been trained for such missions. Even if they did, vertical replenishment still takes a long time and does not solve the fact that the ship needs to enter port to refuel. Because the Fujian has a very limited endurance at sea, the Ford has a clear advantage because the Ford can regularly replenish stores such as food, ordnance, and repair parts while underway, both from helicopters and from oilers. She can stay out to sea much longer than the Fujian can. Additionally, because the Ford has much more shaft horsepower than the Fujian, she can outrun almost any threat. In a real-world scenario, whether the threat is from submarine, aircraft, or incoming missile, carriers like the Ford can increase their speed so much that the threat's fire control solution or targeting will be thrown off. While the Fujian can still go 30 knots, the increased speed of the Ford means her crew has much more survivability and can travel at sustained high speeds much longer than the Fujian could ever hope to do. Ships with boilers like hers must be mindful of maintaining high speeds to keep their boilers at safe operating temperatures, since nuclear reactors do not really have this issue. The Fujian's lack of a nuclear reactor also comes into play for its own email system. The email system is the next generation of aircraft launching systems on board carriers, and both the Ford and the Fujian have four and three, respectively. On legacy carriers, the systems of steam catapults were complicated and prone to failure. With thousands of feet of piping, thousands of valves, and immense pressures, any faults in these systems could bring the whole catapult down. The EMALS fixes reliability issues by using electromagnetic forces to propel the aircraft down the runway. This has several added benefits. EMALS decreases the amount of stress on an aircraft frame. Unlike before, catapults had just one launch speed that would create stress on lighter aircraft frames. EMALS creates a tailored launch by simply changing the amount of electricity that goes into the system. In theory, another benefit to EMALS is that the system is much less complicated less maintenance-intensive, and less prone to failure than traditional catapults. However, U.S. testing showed that this was easier said than done. Over the past several years, the U.S. Navy learned that EMALS was still a system with some kinks that needed to be worked out. After years of struggling with it, the U.S. has finally gotten the system to work, and it's now confirmed to work with most aircraft. However, the Chinese have yet to go through these growing pains. With the launch of the Fujian in June 2022, the ship is only just starting her most basic navigational trials. Right now, the Chinese Navy is just trying to get the Fujian from point A to point B safely, and is still years away from having her reach operational status. But if, for argument's sake, the Fujian was ready, the Chinese would still be at a disadvantage. The first reason would be that the Chinese have zero experience with launching and recovering aircraft with catapults. The two previous Chinese carriers have fixed-wing aircraft take off under their own power. Chinese sailors simply cannot make up for the decades of experience that US sailors have in conducting flight operations both in peacetime and combat. Even with highly experienced sailors conducting testing of emails, it's still a pain for the US to figure out. The Chinese will be humbled quite quickly if they think they can just press a button and launch aircraft with the world's most advanced aircraft launching system if they have never even done so with conventional catapults before. The Fujian's comparatively underpowered engine plant also gives it a distinct disadvantage for emails. Emails requires huge amounts of power and was one of the main driving factors that forced the Navy to design a better nuclear reactor to meet these new power needs. Chinese sailors are in for a rude awakening if they think conventional generators will create enough power to launch and recover aircraft without any problems. It's likely the Fujian cannot generate enough energy to sustain cyclic flight operations at the rate the US could. Another reason why the Fujian cannot sustain the same rate of flight operations is because the number of aircraft and elevators. The Ford carries approximately 75 aircraft of all types, including four squadrons of fighter aircraft, while the Fujian carries just 40 aircraft, and about a third of these are helicopters. Because of this, the Ford has a distinct numerical advantage in launching and recovering aircraft due to numbers alone. But the Ford can also send those aircraft back out much faster than the Fujian could ever hope to. The Ford is equipped with three aircraft elevators, 
while the Fujian has just two. While they are evenly matched there as far as the number of aircraft per elevator, the Fujian is woefully beaten by the Ford's ability to rearm and relaunch its aircraft. The reason why the Ford beats out the Fujian is its advanced weapons elevators. Though launches might seem cool on the weather decks, it's what happens below the decks that really gives the carrier its power. Deep inside the ship, sailors are busy working to construct the bombs that go on the planes. Once assembled, the ordnance has possibly hundreds of feet to go to the flight deck, where the planes are rearmed. Because of this, a carrier's ability to launch and recover aircraft during combat is absolutely tied to its ability to rearm them. Unarmed planes waiting for more bombs clog the flight deck, slowing everything down. Because of this, something as simple as an elevator is actually essential to how fast a carrier can get planes back into the fight. On the Ford, the ship has installed electromagnetic weapons elevators several times faster than traditional elevators. There's no mention of the Fujian having this capability. Because of this, the Ford would not only be able to get more planes in the air, but it would get returning ones out faster than its counterpart. Another advantage the Ford has over the Fujian is the type of aircraft it can carry. The mainstay of Chinese naval aviation is the J-15. Developed as a copy of the Russian Su-33, the Chinese have had many issues with this aircraft over the years. Among the worst issues was that the plane was very heavy. Weighing in at almost 40,000 pounds with no combat load, the J-15 is about 50% heavier than its American counterparts, the F-A-18 and the F-35. Though the increased weight does give it a slight advantage in weapons and fuel capacity, the American aircraft has far greater avionics and radar that negate this slight advantage. Because the J-15 is the heaviest naval fighter in service today, the Chinese have had real problems getting the plane to take off with enough weapons and fuel to be effective. Because of the power issues we discussed earlier, it's unlikely these problems will go away even with a more effective launching system. Additionally, the fact that the Ford can carry the F-A-18 and F-35 in more significant numbers than the J-15 also gives it an advantage. Even though the Ford did not go out with F-35s on its maiden deployment in 2022, it's confirmed that it'll be able to deploy F-35s in the near future. It'll likely be able to deploy them sooner than the Fujian can even reach initial operational capability. Even though the Fujian might seem impressive initially, it cannot come close to the Ford. Similar to Russian technology, the Fujian appears to be more of a paper tiger than anything else. With its outdated engineering system, lack of experienced crew, slow launch rate, and inferior aircraft, it would be no match for the Ford in a stand-up fight. Now, you need to watch China's plan to take over the world, or watch this video instead.